No one should be having to reach up with two hands to get their bagpipe in tune. It's a one-handed operation. Hello, my name is Matt Willis, and in this web series, I give tips and strategies on how to be a stronger and more confident piper. If you're going to truly command your bagpipe, you need to make sure that your bagpipe is in top-notch shape. You want it to be efficient, you want it to be clean, and you want it to last a long time, and we're going to review all of those things today. So the first thing I want to talk about today is testing your drone tops to make sure that they are not leaking. This is something I have not seen readily addressed in any other video. Um, so the part I'm talking about is between the bush and the cap, if you have this design, or if you have this design between, get, make sure that's kind of in focus there, between the bush and the, the wooden section. That's not an inlay, that's actually part of the bagpipe right here with a cap on the outside. And there's yet a third design where, as you can see here, there is no separate part. It's all part of one cap. So we want to test to make sure these are airtight. How do we go about doing that? Well, it's a simple test. All you want to do is you can put a cork in the end or you can just use your finger and you want to kind of suck through this part of the pipe and see if you can make suction on your face. Nice and tight, no leaks whatsoever on this piece. Now, let's test another one. Nice and tight, no leaks there. All right, and let's test yet another one with a different design. Nice and tight. Well, luckily for me, all of my pipes are working great right now, but what if yours is not? What if you go to do that test and it's leaking? You can't make a seal. Well, first of all, what's that going to do to your sound? What it's going to do is a number of possible things. One is it can make the drone sound stuffy or slightly thinner. The other thing it can do is make it less stable at pressure. And thirdly, it tends to make it a little harder to strike in without getting that kind of screamy sound. We don't want any of those things. We want a nice, resonant, steady drone. and. We don't want any leaks on any instrument. Nobody wants leaks on their instruments. So what if it does leak? Well, if you have a newer set, I would contact uh, either the retailer you got it through or the manufacturer and see if you can't maybe get a repair or a warranty at at least inquire into that. But let's say you have an older set of pipes and it's leaking and you can't make that seal. What can you do? Well, with each one of these tops, it's gonna be slightly different. Let's talk about the, the easiest one. I think to fix is the one where you have the integral cap with bush. If this one's leaking, I tend to just get a piece of tape and run it right along the edge between the ring cap and the pipe itself. It's not necessarily the most attractive repair, but it tends to work rather well, especially um, sort, of, sort of thin electrical tape. Uh, and I kind of stretch it so it makes it nice and tight. Do that, try the suction test, and if it works, you're pretty much good to go. What if you have the more classic bullseye design, like this one right here, and it's leaking? What do you want to do? Uh, well, there's a couple of things. The one that I tend to do is I get hemp seal, it's kind of sticky stuff, and I'll actually just kind of put a thin layer of it along between the, the bush and the wood. I put a thin layer of that on and kind of rub it in. And then I check and make sure that it's tight. If it's not, then I rub a little bit more in. I've always gotten it able to be fixed with a little of that. And then I can take a paper towel, kind of wipe off the top. And then I just check it occasionally, make sure it works. And that tends to work fine. It's somewhat temporary. What if you have this style of mount right here and it's leaking right along there? The fix there is very similar to the bullseye style one. However, because you can't actually get to where the bush meets up with the pipe itself, this one tends to be a bit more temporary, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to use the hemp seal and I'm gonna put just a little bit around and then maybe with uh, a toothpick or something not too hard, try to kind of work it into the little gap 
kind of rub it around, and then again, do the suction test on the piece and see if that helps. And if it doesn't, you might want to even think about putting maybe a little piece of tape like the first style and see if maybe the one-two punch of a little bit of hemp seal here and the tape here can't seal this up and get your top nice and airtight. My single greatest pet peeve with this instrument is going to a workshop or a band practice or whatever and I'm asked to go tune somebody else's drones and I go and I reach up and I can't move the top without holding on to the bottom or I go and I start moving the top and I think I'm tuning it and it pulls out of the stock fitment. Don't let this be you. Have your bagpipe ready for somebody else to tune it. No one should be having to reach up with two hands to get their bagpipe in tune. It's a one-handed operation. If I'm going around in a group, I probably have a tuner in one hand and I'm going with, you know, to tune drones with the other. I can't, I've had to put the tuner in the mouth and try to manipulate the, the drone because it's so tight or it's not fitting at the bottom. Drone fitment is incredibly important and we're going to talk about the kind of tension we want right now. The next thing you're going to want to check is the joints and you're going to want to make sure those are also airtight and it's a very similar test i'm going to go ahead and put the base on its section right here it might get easier to use a cork i'll still just use my finger nice and tight that's telling me that i have no air leaking on this joint whatsoever and yet it still has a really nice fitting look i'm moving it with just uh three fingers up and down, no problems at all there. So nice fitment here and yet completely airtight. And I'm just gonna continue on with the uh, the base bottom. Go ahead and put it on. There we go, that was a nice one. So the base drone is completely tight. You're gonna wanna go ahead and check that on both of your tenors as well to make sure that they're nice and airtight and yet relatively easy to move. If you find it's too tight, now's the time to Undo a little string, take a little bit of your hemp or polyester or whatever you use off. You don't want it to be too tight. If it's not tight enough, this is a great time to go ahead and add a little string. What if the fitment feels really nice, but you're not getting that good suction when you test the joint? That's a great time to use some sort of product like this hemp seal. You don't need to put very much on one of the joints and you work it in over your thread. Try it again. It will almost certainly fix the leak that you might have in that section. And similar to what I was talking about on the top, if you're leaking from any of your fitments on your pipe, that escaping air is going to cause a stuffy sound, it's going to cause a lack of steadiness, and it very much can cause a woo when you go to strike in. Poor striking technique can do that anyways, but we wanna to try to mitigate that as much as possible. We want a nice, clean, solid strike in. So we've discussed fitment of the joints and how they should be able to move smoothly on there with just a couple of fingers. What should this joint be like? The one that actually goes into the stocks of your pipes. This one needs to be quite a bit firmer. Now, I don't want it so firm that it's gonna take both hands and a lot of force. I put it in there. I wanna be able to have to use both hands and twist a little bit to get it in there. And with one hand, it doesn't really want to move. And if I were to put the drone top on, let's show that right here. The middle section. Put this on, slides nice and easy on there. Nice and clumsy here. Just two fingers will, you know, it's like you're playing the pipes, this part moves just fine, and yet this whole bottom section isn't moving. So you want the motion for tuning to happen at the tuning joint, not at the stock fitment. This is a great time, again, you're going through the whole instrument to make sure everything's fitting nicely. If it's a little loose, add a little bit of hemp or polyester string, and there'll be cards with links on how to rehemp your joints. I've already done a video for both regular hemp and polyester on that, so check those out. In this case, you might wanna consider the polyester because it's a little finer, it's a little thinner, and you can get the exact fitment you want. If it's a little loose, then you want to take a little off and then the final thing I want to say about stock fitments is I find it critical that we maintain a little gap between the hemp or string or whatever you're using and the mount. 
I don't want the hemp going all the way down to the mount. It has a tendency then to splay onto the mount and that can keep this from seating all the way in the stock. You want, when it's time and you're putting it in, you want it to be able to go all the way in and fit completely. No gap whatsoever in there. You don't want it right there because the hemp isn't allowing it to close and you have a gap. When it comes to fitting your reeds in their perspective seats, grab this right here, you want to make sure that you get a nice firm fit right there. You don't want this falling in. It's not going anywhere. I'm not worried about it. Now there's not a good way to do a suction test on this particular part given the nature of the reed. So a nice firm fit is good. If you're concerned about the gap right here, you can actually take some sticky tack blue stuff that you put on the wall and then make a gray version. You can actually work just a little bit around to try to help make a seal at the base of your reed if you're very much concerned. But you want to make sure that your drone's in there nice and snug. Now this particular drone has actually lost its tail. Where'd you go? There we go. See? Tail. Now you got that little bit of a tail right there. See it? What's great about that, if you do that and you get this tail, you can put that tail down over when you're putting it in, making sure that that's kind of tucked in and along the hemp. And then when you put it in the stock, it'll help keep that reed in place. If it falls out, that should catch it right there. Now adjusting your reeds to the proper strength, setting up your channer. These are all topics that we will be getting into in this series, but that's beyond the scope of this video. This was really about how to make sure your bagpipe is airtight and clean. Those two things will go an enormous way to making sure that your instrument is in top-notch shape. The bag itself. Now there's a ton of videos out there on the bag, so I don't want to belabor this, but you do want to test your bag. In fact, I would test your bag monthly. When it comes to the drones and their fitment, I kind of look at that maybe twice a year, quarterly if you're really into it. It's not something I check all the time. You're gonna feel whether the drones are easy to move, hard to move, so those get a little bit more attention. Checking the bag is a real easy thing to forget to do, and the tiniest leak is going to cause a world of hurt for you. Testing the bag is relatively easy. Now, I like to go ahead. For now, we're gonna cork the outside. Drones, chanter, and then go ahead and install my moose valve. I use a moose valve rather than one at the end of my blowpipe. I really love these things, but I do take it out. They get kind of cruddy and nasty. I don't leave it in. Every time I'm done playing, out comes the moose valve. It's got a great little tool to install it, take it in and out. And there's my blowpipe. Okay, the other thing, we wanna go ahead and check the zipper. And this is a great time right now to, if you don't see any sort of lubrication on the zipper, put the T-zip in. Uh, most, I mean, if you're on a synthetic bag or a high bag that has a zipper, you want to make sure that that zipper has some lubrication on it. I've recently done mine, so I'm not going to do it, but if I were to do it again, um, I put a little bit around the sections at the end here where the zipper will rest, and then I kind of put just a thin layer on one side and then zip it back and forth a few times. And I'm always grabbing the bag and the material around it some people lay it out fully on a table. I don't always have a table, but I am doing my best. If the zipper is really hard, that's a great time to put more lubricant on it. But uh, you don't want to just be like pulling on it. You want to try to support the bag as much as you can. So that's closed. I'm going to go ahead and just leave my cover on and we're going to test this bag. All right, so it's nice and tight, and I'm gonna give it 10 seconds. Some people kneel on it. Um, there's a lot of different tests I've seen. I, especially for a synthetic bag, I don't personally recommend it. Uh, I'm not putting that much force on the bag when I'm playing it, so I don't see why I need to test it with that much force, and I don't wanna put any undue stress on the seams that uh, could make them fail prematurely. So there was a good, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. I'm gonna blow into it again. Nothing. I can't blow anything in, and I feel that is plenty good enough. When I'm playing my pipes, I don't go for a minute, two minutes without cycling my air. If it can stay tight for that long, it's going to stay plenty tight while I'm playing the instrument. But what if your bag is leaky? Well, 
that'd be a great time to take off the cover. And first, I would just kind of start listening. Kind of give it a little squeeze. I mean, if it's, if it's just not keeping any air at all, it's probably time for a new bag if it's synthetic or time for a good solid seasoning with that. We'll talk about seasoning here in a minute. But if it's staying pretty firm, but you, you can tell it's not fully tight, sometimes just listening to it can tell you a lot. Um, you can give each one of your stocks, don't, don't yank on them too hard, but give them a little twist. See if any of them are, are loose. You shouldn't be able to spin any stock readily and sometime spin it and listen in here if you hear a pfft, pfft, any sort of noise. If you don't hear any noise, one of the next things you might want to do is um, get like a, a spritz bottle with a little bit of water and maybe on areas that you're wondering, you might want to spritz it just a little bit. I don't want to saturate the bag. I want to keep the bag as dry as I can. So you might want to spritz around the collars here. Maybe a little bit of water, just a little about the top of the collar between the wood and there, maybe down along here and just see if there's any bubbles. It'll start bubbling, especially if you get a little bit of a squeeze and see if you can't locate the source of the leak. If the leak is here, let's say there's a little damage or maybe sometimes the stocks could be just a little bit too small to really get a snug fit right in the grommet. What you could do there is get yourself a hose clamp and actually put the hose clamp in and around there and, and get it nice and tight, but don't go crazy. Don't crank on this with a screwdriver as hard as you can. But that could be a great way to stop a leak if it's between the stock and the grommet on a bag, a synthetic bag. If it's a leak somewhere on the actual material, I tend to just get a new bag. And I haven't found too many products that work very well. Um, I've had moderate luck with some 100% silicon caulking and smearing it in on the inside where the leak is. That's kind of a stopgap measure though. It's not gonna last you forever. And I, like my preferred bag is just the, the Banatine plain synthetic. It's not the hybrid. I like actually the thinness of this bag. I think it's very responsive uh, and I just, uh, I love the feel of it. Uh, but they are delicate, but I can still get three, four, five years out of these bags playing them on a daily basis. So they're not that fragile if you keep the sharp pointy things away from them. But what if you have a hide bag? And yes, I know this one's not tied into. What if it's leaky? Well, I would take the cover off and see if you can see any spotches, spotches, splotches of discoloring along the bag. That can indicate perhaps where seasoning has started to um, leak through and cause a little bit of a problem. Um, but if you don't see anything really out of the ordinary, I would just give it a good little bit of seasoning. Um, add, you know, just a little bit of this. You don't have to do too terribly much. Uh, whatever, this is airtight. You can use whatever seasoning uh, you prefer or what your bag manufacturer recommends. But uh, just get a little seasoning in there. And again, nine times out of 10, it's gonna firm the bag right on up. Plus the seasoning has some antimicrobial properties that help keep the bag clean. So that's pretty much everything for a hide bag. If there's a big hole and it's leaking out, there's not too much you can do. If you have a zipper on your hide bag, like the one over there, you can go in maybe with a patch of leather and some barge cement and actually patch that area from the inside. That's beyond anything I've tried to do, but I know it would work. Uh, Mr. McKillop here who makes these bags actually uses barge cement to adhere the bag together before riveting or stitching. So I know it's a great way to fix a bag, but if it's on a regular bag like this, it's a little bit more difficult. You might try to apply some barge cement and a patch on the outside of the bag. I don't know how well it will stick if the seasoning's already started to work through the bag, but you can give it a try. It's better than just buying a new bag. Keeping your pipes from the top all the way through the bag completely airtight with all the fitments exactly where they need to be will go a long way to ensuring that your bagpipe is sounding the best it possibly can at every situation. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, please give it a like. Uh, say hi to me in the comments below. I'd love to, to hear any thoughts you might have on this or differing opinions if you have your own way about going any of this stuff. And please share this video with anyone you think might be able to get some use out of it or even subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the easier it is to make videos like this. If you really like it, then I have a Patreon as well. You can go and make a monthly donation of even a very small amount, which goes a huge way to helping me make videos like this with new content and new tunes and everything else. So thank you again for watching and cheers.